35 years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello everybody, Alex Bennett here. This is the Ramble and we're here till midnight Eastern daylight time from New York City. A face I haven't seen for how many years now, Stephen Kravitz? It's uh, well over 30. Well, well over 30. Really? I haven't seen you in 30 years? Well... Pretty much, yeah. When I was, I left San Francisco in '85. Wow, wow. So yeah, I, I still came up and did your show now and again. Yeah, but you and where did you move to? Did you move to Hollywood? No, I moved. Well, at first I moved to L.A. Yeah. <clears throat> now I'm living in Vegas, and I'm moving to Boston. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let's take it one step at a time. You're you're in Vegas. You're not really in Vegas. You're in Boulder City, aren't you? That's correct. Which, in case people don't know, it's a city that was built so people could work on the dam when they were building it. And then right. they left, exactly. and the houses were still there, and it became a city, basically. Right. Uh, okay, so you moved to Boulder City. Now, I, is there a reason why you moved to Boulder City? Yes. It's not like it's the ultimate destination for a lot of people. No, but, you know, I mean, in L.A., I was renting a studio apartment, I think 300 square feet. Yeah. And for the same amount of money, I got a two-bedroom, one bath, uh, you know, 1,000 square feet. So I went for it. Yeah. I thought I was going to retire here. Oh, okay. Well, how old are you now? 64. 64. Okay. Well, you're almost retired. You know. Yeah. Well, Yeah. You got about a year and a half till you get Social Security. And then life is wonderful. Is that right? <laughs> well, at least you'll be getting a regular paycheck, right? That's right. You know. Uh, and then now you say you're moving to Baston. Why, why are you yeah. moving to Baston? Because, <clears throat> excuse me, obviously nobody's worked in a while. So I thought it's time to go home. You know, be around family. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I can still bop into Boston and do a set if I need to. Yeah. You know? I didn't know you were, I didn't know you were from Boston. Outside of Boston. Mm -hmm. How well do you know Massachusetts? Not that well. Not that uh, well. You know you know Worcester? I know Worcester, yeah. That's where I'm from. You and now I seem to remember you told me a long time ago you grew up you were your babysitter was Abby Hoffman's mother. No, no, no. My mother was Abby Hoffman's nanny, or whatever you call oh, babysitter. Oh, okay. Other way around. Right. Yeah. And and uh, so that's the atmosphere you grew up in. Yes. Yes. Very good atmosphere. My mom was so anti-war, anti-military. Yeah. When my dad got out of the Korean, he served in Korea. Mm -hmm. He got home, and my mom burnt all his stuff. Really? Yeah, immediately. Take it off. You know, that might have been a good idea. Because that way he doesn't have to go back and do all these memory things about it. When I was in the service and here was my hat, you know, it, you, right. you, you leave that behind and you move forward. And I bet that was good right. for him in a way. And, and I was the last age to get a draft card. The last age to get a draft card. In other words, my birth year yeah. was the last year to get draft cards wow and my mom said if any of my boys get you know in uh, what, what's it called when they call you in to to do duty drafted draft bingo so she said any of my boys get drafted go to canada and the family will meet you there none of my boys are going to vietnam period wow your mother was yeah. cool your mother My mom was very cool. Yeah. I if it's it's a shame that more mothers didn't say that to their sons. You yeah. know, uh, because you know, 
there was an old saying that I remember from my days as a as a real in the street marching radical, which I I'm not anymore because at my age, you can barely get out of bed every morning. Um, exactly. Well, I mean, I feel guilty that with all that's been going on that I haven't gone out and marched with these people, but I didn't want to take the chance because it, because of my age and because I recently had a, a prostate cancer operation where they planted seeds in me and they did some radiation and everything, which is probably going to do okay. I'll, it's not going to wind up killing me, but nonetheless, it makes me compromised to a certain extent. Right. And also, oh, sure. also just my age compromises me. So to get into those crowds where I would have right. done that at 25 or 30 or maybe even 35, at my age, it, you know, you, you're taking a risk. I haven't left the house more than about four times in the last 100 days, you know. Just to go to the market, right? Uh, well, no, I just uh, just to get the hell out of here. You know, and this is a big place. I mean, we have this huge apartment in New York City. I, I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but we haven't paid rent in about seven, six years. Um, really? Oh yeah, it's it's a whole. I don't even want to go into it, but we have this apartment that has a foyer, a living room, a dining room, a kitchen, a pantry, a small bathroom then a long hallway with a bedroom with two bedrooms on either side of it and then a third bedroom which I've done into this office and then another bathroom voila wow wow you, you know so staying in here for 100 days has not been what it would be for me if I were in a one bedroom apartment for instance right 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 yeah. that's a big apartment oh yeah yeah it's very big a, and you've been in there what, like thirty years? No, no, no. We've been in here. We've been in here about eight years, nine years, something like that. Uh, twenty, uh, I think nine years. It's twenty five hundred square feet. Wow. So it's How'd you find it? How'd you find it? Well, we 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 saw this apartment available and we took it. Uh, there are a whole bunch of problems with it because the guy who owned it uh, or or rented it to us wasn't able. To, he. he he uh, he did something which oh, you can only do if you're really the owner of the apartment. Okay, he signed a lease with us as the landlord, as the owner, and mm -hmm. uh, 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 we signed as the tenants. And he wasn't the owner, you know, he wasn't the landlord. So right. it, it, he was only a renter like anybody else, and he did this as a sublet, but they didn't tell us it was a sublet. So that's what this whole fight's over. Right. And it's the apartment house and us versus him. Okay. Okay. And the apartment house has very been very nice to us about this. They haven't denied us services or anything. They haven't seen rent out of this place for, you know, about five, six years. So I know you said that. Well, because I stopped we stopped paying him rent, because that's who we owed the rent to. Right. You know. Right. Uh, and the rest of it hasn't been resolved. So, you know, but I don't want to get into that. This is a long story. But anyway. So you you're 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 in uh, Boulder City. We have the coronavirus. You right. were at an mine, came, mine came with a case of limes. With a case of what? Lime. Limes. Yeah, limes. Right. And you know you you're uh, in Boulder City. How uh, how how much of an impact has it had on you? Did, did they do a stay in the house deal or or what? Yeah, they did that, then they lighten that up. You know, when you go into the market, you should wear a mask. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's not it's not a hot spot. Yeah. So, I, in other words, they're just suggesting stay in the house as much as possible, right. but they're not saying you have to. That's right. You know, here right. here you had to. Here's what happened in New York, and it's it's an amazing story. Is we had this outbreak that was phenomenal. I mean, we were having 800 people dying every single day in New York State. Right. And I think it was day before yesterday, the mayor of New York City said, in New York City, there had, wasn't a single death on that day. We've gone from all those deaths to zero in New York City and about something like 42 in the entire state. Now, did you... Is the virus a hoax? No. No. It's real. No, it's real. It's absolutely real. I mean, 
I have certain people that I've been trying to get a hold of that don't answer me back, and I think they could be dead from it. I mean, it, 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 it might seem like a hoax if you're living in Boulder City, Nevada, okay? Right. If you live in New York City, you know it isn't a hoax. You know, right. we, we went into, we locked down. We went into our apartments and stayed there, and the only sound you heard out on the streets were sirens. Right. I mean, and lots of them. Right. You know, so if, that, if, that's, uh, if that's a hoax, it's a pretty cruel hoax. Yeah, no shit, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you got to, it, it, it's, um, it, 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 we've gone through hell here. You know, and especially somebody like me. I mean, I have certain procedures that I have to do following the operation, like CT scans and blood draws and things like that. I haven't done them. And I told the doctor's office that I'm not going to do them until I see the coast is clear and I can go get my blood drawn, which I'm going to do next week, or I can come out to Mount Sinai and not feel like I'm going into a Petri dish. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. So, you know, I mean, uh, I just want to stay safe myself. I don't want to die because uh, uh, I, I had a, uh, you know, I had an, I had the pr uh, the procedures. I had some radiation, and then they did the seed implants in my prostate, and supposedly that will take care of it. Well, what's all the testing going to do? It's just going to see what's happening and if all the seeds were in the right place and, uh, you know, they expect my blood test to come out high because for the PSA or whatever, because they've been, they use my my prostate as a pin cushion, you know. Aye. And, and, Aye. And, and and for a while it'll stay up and then it goes down and they just want to they just want to it's monitoring it that's the point it's nothing that's rehabilitative at all. Right. I just had a nurse come by because uh, I had a really bad fall about two weeks ago. Yeah. I smashed up my eye and my shoulder and I got nerve damage in my right hand. Yeah. You know, getting old is just great, isn't it? Get it well, Betty Davis said getting old ain't for sissies. No. You know. No. I mean, and you take a fall like that. and You, you know, folks, I should just start calling the show the old folks show uh <laughs> you, you know but i mean what happens is is that it, it, it it's it, you're subject to more problems that way like you took a fall okay right. you took a fall and you were 25 you get up and you walk away i remember once that's right once i was tried to hail a cab and i went into the uh, street and those were the days when new york wasn't like it is now and there was a big chunk of rock and it was kind of pointed, and I pivoted on it and fell through me right into the uh, right into the street. Right, fell right. down on my knee. Uh, I uh, then had to go to somebody's place, and I started walking up the stairs, and suddenly realized this knee was just trashed. Wow! But I just kept going, mainly because there was a woman I was going to see, and we were going to have sex. So we had sex in spite of the fact that I was in great pain. And when I left, I just a couple, you know, I spent the next couple of weeks hobbling around. Today, I'd probably be in the hospital, with my foot up in the air, or something like that. Right, you know, right, right, right. Because right. you just don't mend like you used to. So this is, you know, it'd be nice if you mended okay, but you know, so, you know, and you've been through a lot too, you know. Yes. You've had your yes. your share of of problems which have caused rehabilitation problems. I'm sure. You just don't heal as well. You know? No, no. Uh, but, uh, I, huh? You know, the uh, medical profession was kind enough to give me neuropathy. Yeah. Medically induced neuropathy. What do you mean? Where your feet are numb? My feet and my hands. Uh, why do they medically induce neuropathy? Well, let's just say I went off the reservation for a while. Uh, and I ended up in a psych ward for two and a half months. Yeah. And for the first two months, I didn't know where I was, who I was, why I was there. Yeah. And I'm in Canada, so nobody's visiting me, so I have no point of reference. Wow. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they finally found, you know, they were basically guinea pigging me, you know, try this, try that, try this, try that. And then they, through all the different medications they induced in me, yeah. It caused neuropathy. Well, oh, it caused neuropathy. Okay. Right. Yeah, I have neuropathy in my feet. 
but not because I went through any drug program, just because at my age I've got neuropathy in my feet. Right. You know, right. So it's great having numb feet all the time. You don't know when you have socks on or don't have socks on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, we spent a nice little bit of time with you, Stephen, and it's so great. It is. To, so great to see you. And um, uh, you, know, hey, you look great, Alex. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we can talk about that next time. Anyway, right. stick around. And uh, but uh, right now, for our audience, I want to say goodbye. And this has been Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen, one of the truly funny, funny people out there. Uh, who it's a shame that he can't work anywhere right now. But that's the coronavirus for you. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Alex. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, that's uh, that's Steve Kravitz, and I'm I'm glad we caught up with him. And we'll have him on again next week. Anyway, <coughs> mm, still allergies, and I uh, um, echo. What's the pollen count? High, high pollen for trees. Okay. All right. Shut up. Shut up. Anyway, uh, we're uh, ready to go here. We uh, are, as you know, using, for the time being, we're using Zoom. We like the way it works. Um, uh, and we hope you enjoy the way it works as well. If you want to use it, if you want to call us, it is so simple, it's ridiculous. All right? And here's what I suggest you do. Just go to my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash A Bennett, or go to gabnet.net. There's a thing in the center of the page. You just click on that, and automatically it will dial us right up, okay? And if you want to, uh, if you want to do uh, uh, just, you know, you're watching us on uh, YouTube, like at the bottom there under Alex Bennett, uh, there's actually a link, and you can click on that, and that will get you there. Wait a minute. Let me see if I can I can show you that screen. Okay, look. See? There's there's me. Okay. And, oh, there it comes Phil. Uh, uh, but uh, right there at the bottom, you can see that. Okay. Anyway, 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 here we go. Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba. Uh, there you are. Uh, let me just uh, change to gallery view. Uh, and uh, there uh, we have, could you turn yourself sideways there, John Larkin? You are. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if that, if that changes it. No, actually, try it the other way. Try it the other way and see if that does it. Then go now go the other direction from where you were. No, turn no, it. got to go the other way. Yeah, the other way. Let's see. It, 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 it doesn't. No. There. That's perfect. No, it's not. No, what? it's not. You're side. You're upside down here. So oh, okay. Let's okay, go back okay. to the way you were. Okay. All right. Okay, how's that? Apparently, what kind? Of, what are you using? Uh, an iPhone. Using an iPhone. That should uh, should change it, but it doesn't change it. So. That's yeah, okay. I'm seeing myself on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Boy, it is hot in here tonight, and I don't know why. Oh, here comes Brian Neary. See, I don't even have to touch anything. Uh, these people just keep popping right up here, and that's it, you know. Um, hello to uh, Phil, and hello hey. to John Larkin, hello to Charlie Wallace, hello to Brian Neary. So far, members of our citizen panel, and all you have to do is click on the link to get to us. It's that simple. Uh, and it, we have it in three places, so you can do it in th three different ways. Gabnet.net, go right there in the center of the page. Just says click here to get into the Zoom. Uh, and uh, uh, it's on the uh, uh, iTunes, uh, I, excuse, yeah, the iTunes player. And it is also uh, at, at, fa at facebook.com forward slash A Bennett. Excuse me, I'm all out of it today. It's been one of those rough days <clears throat> where nothing worked. Our, our, our uh, 
clothes washers started leaking. There you uh, go. I can't produce, uh, uh, I can't put uh, uh, stuff up like a lot of things on my, uh, on, on the, the server that I do business with up in Canada because <laughs> they've got that screwed up and I've been dealing with that for two days. It's, if it isn't one thing, it's another. Here comes Joshua Wheeler. Oh my God, the name Joshua. You've never used that, Josh. On YouTube, before Josh came, I'm, I'm the bottom person, so I, I'm holding everybody up. You're holding everybody up, right. Yes. You're like Atlas. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, anyway, and, and on top of that, I'm a little hoarse today because uh, the uh, uh, we don't have a high pollen count overall, but I think trees are my problem. So my eyes have been burning, and it's, uh, it's terrible. Anyway, so that, you know, the, that hasn't worked. The, the clothes washer is leaking. Uh, so we have to get some kind of whirlpool, whir, you know, fixer guy to come in and fix the goddamn thing. You know, it, 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 nothing's wrong. Oh, yeah, and then Marjorie has this little face cleanser thing she bought that costs about 200 bucks. Uh, it, it stopped working. So it's it's really been a screwed up day for us, you know. Yeah. Ah, well, how's how's your day been going, Phil? You, it's five days now of your. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm really glad that uh, I'm going to have a weekend off. I was ready. Yeah. Well, I I was when I was faced with the possibility of having to have radiation. What bothered me was having to do it. Um, five days a week like you're doing it yeah for like seven weeks and in my case uh no i said no five days every other day and then you're in and yeah. out and you're you're taken care of so because i still have a prostate see that's what happens when they remove the prostate they have nothing to radiate yeah but i got hair even though it was moved around i still have hair and you don't <laughs> oh well uh get ready to lose it Ah, oh, this stuff will stay. Uh, why is it stapled in? Yeah, they they take it out of the back mm -hmm. and they staple it in the top. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't receded at all because it looks like it's not the same amount of hair they put in. Uh, it is. It's just that I had additional natural hair that fell out. Okay. So this is this what they put in is what's left. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because uh, what I was reading is is that uh, they they say that the coronavirus mm -hmm. may attack people who are bald. Oh, then I'm safe. Because they have too much testosterone. Yeah. Well, I and don't have people, to worry well, about that anymore. People, well, no. What what's happening is it, you may be saved from the coronavirus because you're taking that hormone. Right. That stops yeah. your testosterone from growing. Yeah. Uh, I'll never, I'll never be have that twelve pack, you know, uh, in in the stomach. You never did. No, but I'll never have one. Either. <laughs> you never did. <laughs> oh boy. Well, anyway, so so and I'm I'm tired today, and I was grouchy all day, and I don't know. I I got to quit taking pills to put me to sleep at night. It makes me grouchy during the day. You know. Yeah. So. And then girlfriend can't stand me. But then again, she pisses me off sometimes. So. Yeah. Well, you got it on uh, the whatever view puts the person in. That's what uh, you, you got it on the main. Uh, what what do they call that view? Uh, no, you do. Oh, I do. Yes. Yeah. You have a speaker view. Oh, okay. See. You're learning. So you the to stare yourself all night. What he's talking about, folks, here's the difference. I take it, put it on speaker view, and there we see we got all the people across the top, and there we got Brian Neary. Uh, but uh, then we go back to gallery view, and that's like this. Yeah, isn't that nice? That's simple. Anyway, uh, where were we? Okay. Um, so I, I had a little something I want to talk about tonight that – really is kind of bothering me. Have you heard the whole flap about Gone with the Wind? 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, they want to, uh, uh, Warner Brothers, who has TC, uh, uh, HBO Max, one of their big things was they had Gone with the Wind on there. And then, of course, this whole thing has happened in the last couple of weeks, and they have removed it from being played. And they say because it's racist. Yeah. And, uh, I, and, and that bothered me. And I'll tell you why it bothered me. Up until Sidney Poitier won an Academy Award, there wasn't a single black person who had won an Academy Award with the exception of Hattie McDaniel for Gone with the Wind. I Ain't Birth and No Babies? Is that no, right? that was Butterfly McQueen. Huh. Yeah. Um, Hattie McDaniel was marvelous in that part. The part she played was kind of a black woman who looks at these white people like they're assholes, you know, and just kind of always giving Scarlet the eye like, oh boy, you know. And I just, I just think to rob that woman's performance from the American public and from history and the history of film is a terrible, terrible slight. Are they taking that out, or are they just putting in some additional content? No, no, no they're not putting oh, in the, additional content. They're gonna, I think they're going to put in a discussion at the beginning and end of oh. why this film is racist. And yeah. i got to tell you, you know, it was, it, all it was doing was portraying the, the South before the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to do that if you aren't going to portray slavery? Yeah. And, and oddly enough, this guy who directed the film or wrote the film, uh, 12 Years a Slave, is the guy complaining about Gone with the Wind. Hmm. You know? There's one other thing. It's, it's not a movie. It's, it has to do with a movie. Uh, I've never been there. Is there a thing, there's a thing called Splash Mountain. Well, I was going to get know. into that. That's the next okay. thing I was going to get into. Uh, then there's another kid, bad situation. There's a picture called Song of the South. Right. Oh, yeah. Which, uh, which I've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen it, Charlie? Yep. What was Zip your opinion of it? I love the song Zippity Doodah. Yeah. I like the movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, let me explain or something it, to you. That film has a portrayal by a guy by the name of James Basket, I think was his name. Uh, and and uh, he was an actor who played in Hollywood, did minor roles, and played this part of Uncle Remus and won an honorary Academy Award for the part that year. So now we have two, well, you have two Academy Award winners that are being deprived of their talent because... They won't show these films. Uh, in the case of Song of the South, you never could see it here in this country. You had to get a copy of it from Japan, of all places, because it is distributed over there. But what happened was they, they stopped showing it uh, because uh, the NAACP, well, no, it wasn't the NAACP. Somebody just got it up their craw that it was racist. And if you've ever watched the film, Charlie, would you agree with me? It's not particularly racist, is it? No, no, no. In fact, it talks about the you know the relationship between this boy who's having troubles with his family who can't get along, and this lovable not slave because this is post Civil War. They are sharecroppers, okay? Uh, who befriends this kid and he becomes. Uh, the boy be, be, really feels a love from this guy. I mean, it was really a beautiful picture about the boy and this Uncle Remus. And he tells him these stories about Br'er Rabbit. Yep. I uh, love Br'er Rabbit stories. Yeah. Now, on top of that, Disney won't show the picture in America, hasn't shown it since the 50s, right? Yep. But guess what? There's a ride at Disneyland called Splash Mountain, which is based on Song of the South. So kids are riding this ride uh, with the, the song Zippity Doodah going on yeah. before it and all of that. And the kids don't even know what it refers to. Yeah. 
Add to this uh, one other thing, and that is, you know, I, I, I guess this means we're never going to see Amos and Andy again. Yeah. All right? Uh, the, the, the first show on television to ever portray blacks as professionals. Mm -hmm. There were lawyers, doctors, uh, you know, the only people that were buffoons were the lead character, one of the lead characters, a couple of the lead characters, because it was a sitcom. I mean, you know, are all women like Lucy? You know, uh, it, it, it wasn't, Amos and Andy wasn't racist. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Freeman Gosden, Gosden and Charles Correll, who created the parts on radio and created the characters, decided when they went to television they wanted an all-black cast. It was the first all-black television yeah. show on network television in prime time, okay? Uh, and, and so, I mean, uh, are we, and by the way, one of the actors on that show was the guy, uh, Johnny, what was his name, uh, who played the voice of Br'er Rabbit in Song of the South. Uh, he played, uh, oh God, I can't remember the name of the character. Um, but kind of a goofy guy. Um, I just, I don't know. Is it me or I'm going to defer to Charlie on this one because, you know, you grew up with this stuff. Yeah. Did you ever? That's the only way I saw Song of the South is I was around in the 50s. Yeah. And when you saw us, Amos and Andy, did you feel a certain maybe pride that your people were being represented on television? Yeah, because my dad was a doctor. So it was great that they actually had, were, were, were showing a black, you know, professional on, yeah. on Amos and Andy. Well, they had black professionals, and also uh, Andy ran a cab company yeah. and was a very hardworking guy and very level-headed and was not played as a buffoon at all. And Amos was kind of a buffoon who was always being taken by the kingfish who was this... Uh, Conning, conning guy, and he had a wife named Sapphire who happened to be very level-headed and hated the way George acted, George Kingfish Stevens. So, I just, I just think we're throwing the the baby out with the bathwater here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Brian. Yeah, no, I don't know this situation, but I know you know before they've they've had issues before, and you know it's not even the people that. The groups that are involved that other people start saying oh we should restrict that you know like if if the african-american community is not saying this stuff and you have executives somewhere and they're not that you know that ethnicity and they're saying to do that stuff that's where i think is ridiculous too. well i, I just know you know i just think that we have a tendency in in time uh, in times like these to suddenly go overboard um but usually it's white people complaining about stuff like yeah, that, and yeah. they should just shut up. Well, I mean, you also have, like, this black writer did 12 Years a Slave who went, oh, that doesn't represent the South the way the South. Well, that kind of was the South. I mean, after all, you got to remember uh, when What's-Her-Name wrote the book, it wasn't that far removed from the time when slavery oh. existed, so that there was a certain authenticity that came to it just by virtue of its place and time. Yeah, I, I'm trying. I I'm thinking. I can think back to when I was a kid, watching Amos and Andy on TV, and uh, I didn't see it as a racial thing. I only saw it as entertaining. You know, I guess maybe kids are more innocent, but I, I you know, I didn't see any black white thing. They were just actors, and they were funny, and they were doing their thing, and uh, I still remember some of the episodes. That I saw as a kid because I haven't. Now seen here's an movie. interesting thing: Amos was played by I'm trying to remember his name right now because my mind's a blank tonight. But it was played by a guy who was one of the premier black film directors of his time. Mm -hmm. uh, there was this whole thing called race movies. Okay, they played basically in black neighborhoods. Um, Oscar black Michaud. Boy, Oscar Michaud was probably the best of them. He was a great director. And the guy, let me look his name up here, because I really want to, uh, you know, give out with his, uh, 
give give a shout out, as it were. Oh, uh, 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 Alvin Spencer, I think was his name. No, no, that was the other guy. Wait a minute. Amos and Andy, uh, and Andy. God, got to go a long way to get John uh, Amos and Andy. I got John Amos. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Am Amos and Andy. Here we go. Amos and Andy. Show. Huh? Yeah. I am DB. Yeah. Uh, Spencer Williams was his name. Uh, and he was a major director in black films and was known as one of, if, if you ever, if people want to go back and see like uh, great, uh, you know, movies uh, in, out of that black era, um, his films are, are some of the premier films of the time. So, you know. All I'm saying is these are people who made their place in black history who are no longer going to be a part of black history. And this this year. Huh? This year. I think uh, thing the pendulum will swing and people have short memories and it's going to... This, this is all fabricated to yeah. this, try to destroy Trump. By the way, yeah, no, it's not, gone, for, forget it. It's not to it destroy Trump. It started long before Trump. Come on. Uh, no. No, 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 you, you take everything that's out to uh, get Trump. And, all no, right, all right. Let's not city. let's not turn this discussion into that. Okay. Okay. Kill the pigs. Power to the people. Yeah. Right. Okay. Anyway. Right on. Right on. Hello, hello, right Patrick. Right on. <laughs> uh, no, uh, the, you know, I just I just feel that uh, what's bothering the other thing that's bothering me is I I go on and I watch all these television news networks and I don't care which one they are right or left or whatever but they're all taking advantage of this situation rather than sympathizing with it it's, is this me uh, you, you kind of look like you agree with me Josh what do you think the, 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 the news networks many of them and also TV networks and so on all seem to be taking advantage of this situation to say, oh, see, we have somebody there, and we're sympathetic towards blacks. And I'm thinking to myself, as all of this is going on, you know, this guy isn't the first black man murdered in America. I mean, there were lynchings going on for years before we ever got to Rodney King, okay? Yeah. Uh, where were you guys? Were you so absolutely blind to this and now you're making a big deal oh well hey we're doing a show tonight on msnbc uh we're doing the black history show or something like that and you go come on you know but it's all because of this too because you know no matter what people say now when they see it on film everybody can relate to that yeah but and don't when people but, hear other people it, it's hard to relate you know and, and if you're not right up in that culture Two of my best friends are black, 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 dark, black, 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 and, black. Wow. Well, so black a, a lot of stories, a lot of stories, but man, I, I can't relate to it. Every time we're together, everything's fine. But you know, one lives up in Oakland, and man, they go through a lot of stuff. And man, it's, it's like gut wrenching to know my. But but you get what I'm saying about these or these these companies. All suddenly, you know, we're 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 black centric here. Oh, this is a horrible thing, and we've got to do something about that. Wait a minute, where were you? This has been going on forever. I mean, I'm sure uh, Charlie sits there and goes, "Now you're you're coming up with this." You they know, were hockey's I, last week, and now all of a sudden they're like, uh, and, <laughs> and by the way, you know that they, they they have this list of names. Um, Cuomo had a list of names today of all the black people that have been killed by police. Uh -huh. They weren't the only ones over the years. The ones you never heard of are the ones they got away with. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, that's probably a laundry list. A, yeah. Dave, Dave Chappelle. Hmm? Dave Chappelle has a little video out right now, about a half hour, and um, it, I just saw it today. It's just bouncing around, it's going viral, and it's pretty powerful. He, he, if you guys see it, you guys should see it on his Facebook somewhere. But, yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, like, like Stanford and Son, the Jeffersons, all in the family. That's where I grew up. Oh, and I love my that. My grandfather and I. My grandfather was one of those old Italian guys that said the colored people, like we were talking last night, the slant eyes, the chinks, all that stuff. <laughs> Man, when you watch those kind of things, we laugh so hard. But the right? Jeffersons, the Jeffersons and Sanford and Son owe their existence to Amos and Andy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Really? Yeah. I love yeah. that show. I heard you talking about it. I love uh, those old shows like that. Yeah. The, but I don't know. You know, because they they, they, the they, they they paved the way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What were you saying, Tony? Alex, can they have gotten away with all the family today on TV, or would they would have went crazy? It's who, who knows? Who knows? She got away with Maud. Oh, she put Archie in his place. I love that. She's sitting in the chair. Didn't yeah. they he try was with that live program? Was Remember the live awesome. program they had, uh, like, six months ago? And I didn't like all the family? Yeah. Hey, yeah, that sucked. Yeah. They can get out of yeah, it's. Uh, I want him to bring back Mr. Ed. You probably shoot the horse, Phil, at the end of the episode. <laughs> they kicked Rosie over. I knew it was blue. I knew it was blue. But I, you know, nice to be on I, I, I call me, call me, uh, whatever. But I just, I just, I don't want them to touch a hair on the head of 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 Gone with the Wind. It is what it is, okay. And there are a lot of other movies out there that TCM runs all the time where you, you see things that are racist. And uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the most racist ones are the ones with the people who um, imitated Step and Fetch It. Let me explain Step and Fetch It for a second. He was a great actor who came up with a comedic character, okay? And everybody says, oh, he created a stereotype. No, he didn't create a stereotype. He created a character that he used first on stage and then in films. What happened was other people saw him being so successful, they did the same thing. And they're the ones that made it a stereotype. Willie Best, Mantan Moreland. I mean, we could go on. There were a whole bunch of them. And they were all doing this, oh, feet don't fail me now routine. What does that mean, feet don't? What does that mean that you can use to say that? Well, like, it's, okay. a, it's just a very it's racist. Oh, that's it? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Feet don't fail me now. Or I seen a ghost. You know, they would have the black guy. They'd have, uh, the they'd have Mantan Moral and see a ghost. And all of a sudden, somehow, they would turn him white. You know, oh. things like that. But and but it, step and well, fetch it step and fetch it wasn't uh, you know what, what wasn't what was didn't create the stereotype he was just so good at what he did everybody else wanted to do the same thing and that created the stereotype. You also had on uh, Jack Benny uh, Rochester. Rochester was a whole different story. Rochester was playing a black man who was a servant to a white guy who kept putting the white guy down every yeah, sh chance he could get. Uh, you remember they, they, they were great. They were. I love watching his shows. I can't get enough of them. Yeah, but you're not getting I what we're talking them. about here, Tommy. We're you talking about the he, fact that we're, we're Rochester, who uh, I thought was one of the great all-time comedians, comedians, was always one-upping Jack. He was always getting the, the the best of Jack Benny. Oh, okay. You know, uh, so the idea that he was subservient and he was playing as, you know, no, that wasn't the case. You know. And by the way, was in a very good movie that I hope they don't get rid of uh, uh, years ago with Lena Horne and um, uh, what's her name? Oh, God. I'm trying to remember the name of the movie now. My mind's a, a, a heaven, a heaven, a heaven, a heaven, 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 heaven. I'll remember it. But, he, I mean, he was, he was terrific. But I just, I just, I hate this for, for the performers mm. who, whose performances were hallmarks in the business, you know? I mean, uh, when you talk about, uh, 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 what's her name from Gone with the Wind? See, my mind is blank. Uh, uh, from Gone with the Wind, uh, you're talking about somebody who, who was a very talented actress, and who did an incredible job in that picture. And the fact that her performance may never be seen again is obscene. And the same is true of James Bassett with Uncle Remus. The only time you ever see him is when they play a clip of him singing zippity doo -dah. You know, terrible. Why would you think that the performance wouldn't be seen again when all they're doing is putting some context in? Because they're going to do something to that. To, to just, oh, really? You know. Uh, just, uh, even that they're considering it, it's not a big deal. Plus, movies are a product of their time. And they're, they're, they're a snapshot of that time. And if it's racist, it's still a snapshot of that time. Um, and I don't think 
that TCM is going through their entire catalog, which is enormous, and trying to find every racist inference they can find in their movies. No, it's because some black writer said, oh, you know, Gone with the Wind's racist. Um, and now it's, uh, well, let's see here, they, they, there's actually a call to tear down the Washington Monument mm. because he was a slave owner. I'd take him off the dollar bill, too. You know. uh, but replace him with Hattie McDaniel. All right? Yeah. So, this is all this. What do you think of all of this, Patrick, or do you have an opinion? Patrick always has a snarky opinion about stuff like this. His first answer will be, you know what? His first answer will be, you don't want to know what I think. Go ahead, Patrick. I, I, uh, Charlie saw a comment I made uh, today on Facebook. I'm tired of all the nonsense. I'm tired of the call to pull down the Confederate general. I'm tired of pulling down this, pulling down that. I'm tired of banning this, explaining the fuck out of this. Who fucking cares? It's history. You know, the, the, the quick answer is these fucking idiots that are pulling down these statues, leave them. Have the city council determine that they can be out of the town squares, put them in a museum, That's and right. shut the fuck up. That's a very good and idea. And the same for the Confederate flag. I don't want to hear another fucking word about that flag because nobody flies it on the front yard unless they are racist and leave it because it's better to know who they are. Yep. Than to <laughs> what the fuck? You know, and, and Song of the South and all these fucking shows and, you know, this one's racist, this one isn't. In another two years, something else will be wrong. What about movie that, why isn't a Breakfast with Tiffany's banned? Oh, because of Mickey Rooney's character. Oh, that, oh, that, that, that man? oh, that was that was that was because the Asians don't complain. I'm telling you, oh, yeah, no, really, right. it's true. It uh, uh, <laughs> when you talk about people who played subservient characters in films, I would be oh, willing to say there were as many Asians portraying butlers and servants as there were black people in movies playing Ooh. butlers and servants. Hop Sing on Bonanza. Yeah. 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 They and, had the, hmm? the 30 for 30 with uh, about Bruce Lee B. Water that was just on like last week. Yeah. And they talked about him when he was in films and stuff like that and all the races, you know, how you guys know. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is, is absolutely, I mean, you talk about uh, 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 the way Asians were portrayed in films and yet, and, and, the, and the, you know, two, two bad ones, okay? You came up with the Mickey Rooney in Breakfast at Tiffany's playing... A, uh, a, a Japanese person with big buck teeth, oh, yeah. okay? <laughs> but uh, uh, you don't, didn't, uh, let's see here, you didn't mention, who Jerry was the, Lewis? what? But Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis did it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and he's disparaging women when he goes, lady. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, he did Peter it. Sellers <laughs> played Charlie Chan. Oh. <laughs> and we and we must not forget Sidney Toller, who played Charlie Chan for years, who was a white man, and then he was followed by I'm trying to remember who the other actor was that played uh, Charlie Chan, but he was white as, as snow himself, and he was always playing opposite Key Luke, who really was Asian, and probably looked at him and said, you know, I could do this part, <laughs> you know, I could really do a great job of this part but didn't get it because the white guy got it. And yet, you do not have Asians complaining, and they don't complain because they just figured, ah, fuck them. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna have our own community, we're gonna take care of each other, we're gonna have our own lives, and if they wanna go ahead and portray us like they've been portraying us, we're, we're not gonna make a big deal out of it. We'll just, in the meantime, own everything in town. Yeah. And, just, and put a lot of MSG in their food and kill them. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I heard today, that Yale University, the guy uh, that it's named after, was actually a slave trader. 
Uh, yeah. and so if they're going to rename these army bases, they should rename Yale University. They should call it uh, George uh, Floyd really? University yeah. instead of Yale because the guy was that. a slave trader. Well, I don't think we need to revise history unless that history is wrong. Okay. Well, uh, I, I don't think we need the to difference be, you know, I think we should get on and make our own history now, you know, but, uh, John, how are you feeling about this? You've been really quiet. Oh, um, I just, I, I, I thought that Beverly Hillbillies, that was horrible the way they portrayed, uh, X, you know, that was, you know, Who? kidding. I'm trying to be funny. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I got it. Uh, it's funny. Yeah. Well, the, I didn't like it because they were portraying in a negative light a a, 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 um, a, a Trump voter. And, right. Yeah. <laughs> and I. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, a lot of people from the South uh, they didn't like uh, Hee Haw. I mean, the way they were portrayed on Hee Haw, but it was still a really popular show because you know the music and everything. Mm -hmm. It taken yeah. Paw Patrol off of television. This is a cartoon about a cop. Oh my dog. God, really? Yeah. Oh, oh, there, 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 no, there's there's a cop. There's a girl sky. There's I know all of them. There's oh. a Dalmatian uh, for the fire guy. There's guess whose Everest kids watch guy. this show? I took my daughter to they, not on ice, but they did like a performance thing. Oh, and, uh, are they t really? Are they taking Paw Patrol off? Yes. That's what I heard. Yeah. Along with. Cops yeah, and cops. all those other ones. They're but, they're uh, talking about getting rid of law and order, and well, especially the Mariska Hargitay character, who's always been a very compassionate character, supposedly, yeah. on the show. I never watched the show. Uh, but they're thinking of getting rid of that character. If it wasn't for law and order, I wouldn't have known to take a black light to a hotel room and put it uh, you know, on the, on the comforter <laughs> to, <laughs> to know whether or not I wanted them to change it. See whose ju juices had flowed before yours. Yeah. Uh, uh, Where are you staying? <laughs> yeah. I mean, are we getting? Are, are we going? Uh, you know, are we going crazy now? Because all these people, as I say, you know, where were you? Where were you yeah. before? You know, George Floyd might not be dead now if you've been speaking up a couple of years ago. You know, but now's the time you're going to. Going to oh well, now's the time to do it. And let me ask Charlie because. He's the one who's most affected over any of us here by this. Do you feel this is going to change anything? I'm not holding my breath. Oh, wow. You don't think he's going to go to jail? You don't think he'll go to jail? No, no, no. That's not what we're talking about, to, uh, Tony. Oh, okay. We're talking about as soon as this election is over, all of this goes away. Is right after November. It, it will completely happen. Did Cuomo sign that bill today for reform? Yeah, huh. he, he did sign a bill today. Yeah. Yeah. Executive order. Exactly. State, executive state order. Uh, and he has oh. the backing of the... Oh, no. Though he, excuse me. It was voted by, by the state senate and the state oh, assembly. Yeah. 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 Oh. Uh, because he had the two heads of that there, and along with Al Sharpton who uh, I've never had any great love for, but I have to admit he's been he's been doing a pretty good job lately. Yeah. You know. Uh, he gave a good speech. In, fact, day, in fact, today yeah. when he was talking with Cuomo, he said, I go way back with Mario Cuomo when I was fatter than I am now and stupider. <laughs> you know, so he kind, of, he kind of admitted that he was not the, the kind of person he has become, you know. He, would, he was not okay. proud of that person. Uh, and because he, when he said that, I went, okay, I'll give this guy a shot. You know. Okay, he's being humble. I know it's humble. What, Al Sharpton no. humble? Come on. I still like when that guy beat him up in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, on the Downey. My, Downey, yeah. Morton no, Downey Jr. Boom. show, yeah. <laughs> Downey, yeah. Beat the crap out of him. He went right down. But, but anyway. Like hot so, towel he dropped. Yeah. But uh, I think things have. I think things have to change. Something has to change this time because if it doesn't, the next time it's going to be all out riots yeah, and riot yeah. When point. you see all the when you see all the white people and you see everybody out in the streets and like I said, maybe coronavirus has something to do with it because people aren't going to a lot of people aren't going to jobs. They can protest like they would want to. But man, I just with all the stuff that I've seen out in areas I've never seen before and the the, the crowds. 
and the crowds that are non-stop. This hasn't been like three or four days. And like after that one weekend, the first weekend, everything died down. But everything's been kept going strong. And mm -hmm. I, and it's going to be sad if there aren't changes this time. What, what's, what's your feeling, Josh? You've been kind of quiet here. I mean, uh, I think this is what the left normally does. They take a single issue and a single problem, and they decide to use that to try hey, to Kevin. fix everything they see wrong with the world. I mean, yeah, I, I don't understand what, you know, tearing down a Confederate statue, for example, whether you think it should come down or not doesn't matter. I, I just don't see the relationship to what happened to George Floyd. And I don't see why removing it is supposed to be an answer to helping people in the situation that he finds himself in. I mean, I mean, I, I guess I can understand how some people are going to draw a parallel, but I mean, you removed a piece of marble. You didn't solve any problems. You didn't offer any solutions. It's not going to do anything. And the only way to change people's behavior, in my opinion, is to change their mind. And in order to change a person's mind, you need to teach a person or educate a person. And you can't educate a person or teach a person by hiding all the facts on the other side of your personal argument. That's not called learning. That's called indoctrination. Mm -hmm. So you can't sweep everything that you don't like under the rug. I mean, especially when you enter the world of entertainment and and in those realms and then you start impinging upon other people's personal freedoms or the rights that they have to watch certain things yeah i mean i'm sure you might have heard but you know when game of thrones ended it was supposed to be replaced with a show done by the same people and that show was going to be one of these alternative reality shows and it was going to be called antebellum and it was going to be an alternative reality show where the the Confederacy had won the Civil War. Yeah. And it was going to take place in, in late in the century when slavery was still in place and worse than ever. And I don't know much more about the rest of the plot. I just know that the show was ready to go and was done. And before it could even get started, there was so much outcry about a show like that. And they just gave it up. I mean, why? Maybe I wanted to watch that show. And without well, without knowing the what the take was going to be on. I mean, but even if it is bad, who cares? Maybe I like that kind of movie. Or so what's I guess what I'm saying is what's next week? I like movies where someone is wronged and then they like to go kill all the people that wronged them. That's my favorite kind of movie. But you don't like that movie. So now you don't want me to watch it anymore. Right. Because that's wrong. I mean, why? Uh, it's a fun movie. John has his hand Lady up. Antebellum. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a second. John has his hand up. As far as those statues go and everything, you know, if 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 um if if those statues, you know, if I, if those sta those statues represent uh, people that wanted to put keep me in slavery, I say fucking tear them down. I have no problem tearing them down. And if anybody says anything about like, oh man, leave them up, well, you know, come on, bring it on. You know, I mean, let let's have it out. But uh, I don't think there's any real debate. I mean, it's. I, I I'm a white person, so I got I, I've got no business saying, hey, leave those things up, you know. I mean, if if somebody wants, if a black person says take them down, fucking take them down, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, I I would honor but that. No, but but I disagree because because a black person said it. I mean, I, I just I don't get it. And ninety nine percent of the people, if no, I mean, I don't. Here's, you know, I get to you in a second, Charlie. Go ahead, keep going. I mean. 99.9% .9 of the people who say tear that stuff down because yep. that guy was such and such or so and so and he was for slavery I guarantee you no doubt 99.9% .9 of those people have never read a single book on the Civil War or the period before the war or the period after the war I guarantee you 99.99% .99 of those people never read anything more about the war than what was required for them to memorize a couple questions to pass a test when they were in the 8th grade and pass a test when they were in the 12th grade. So they don't have a decent understanding. I'm not defending it. 
I'm saying they're not open-minded. They don't want to hear the other side of the argument. Do I think mm. those people should be glorified? In most cases, no, I don't. But I'm also not going to sit here. I mean, if you really think Robert E. Lee served in the Civil War for slavery, I don't have I, enough time in the next 26 minutes to fucking explain that to you. Because that I, is not why he did. And if you think that's why he did, we need to have a different conversation. Because this isn't one of them. And I'll tell you another thing. You can't deny the acumen that he had as a military leader. I mean, does that mean he needs to have a statue in every state? No, I, I didn't say it did. But let's not act like he was some old bumbling fool. He wasn't. Things can be learned from the legacy he left behind. Some people's legacies are negative. That's fine. But you can still learn from them. I, I mean, okay. it's okay to have the conversation. Charlie's been Charlie's, like Charlie's, Charlie's well, been chopping at the bit here. Charlie? The problem with that is that nobody put up a statue of Robert E. Lee or, or, or Hood or whoever his other Confederate officers were because they were heroes. They, these statues were not put up, after, you know, in 1870, five years after the Civil War or whatever. These statues were put up in the 1920s, 1930s, and they were put up to intimidate black people at a time when black people were being lynched hung from trees and that was to put black people in their place that's yeah. why these statues were put up they didn't get put up because they were heroes they, but, were get, they got put up to intimidate black people. by the way charlie happens to really, be right I don't, I don't think i agree with that but what, what 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 don't you agree with josh that the statues were put up as a racist intimidation would you me. agree though that they were put up in the 20th century no. Look it up. There were, Look there, it up. There, were, there were monuments that began to be put up within five to ten years after the end of the war. I mean, not all of them. They, they've been putting them up since the end of the war. Yeah. Yeah. Rommel was a great general. I mean, you put up statues of Rommel? If people want to. I see I you, mean, Patrick. Don't go look at it. Patrick <laughs> has his hand up. Uh, Washington and Lee University. I mean, they're, they're right there. Robert E. Lee is the one that uh, founded that university and had it named for the first president of, of the United States, who was a federal Virginian. And I mean, so should we get rid of Washington and Lee University because it bears the name of two slave owners? And I mean, and I'm sure there were statues in, there are statues inside that university or on the ground of Robert E. Lee, because he founded the damn thing. Um, you know, and as far as Rommel goes, Rommel was really a great tactician as well. And he was forced to commit suicide because he knew better than Hitler that they were fucked in Africa. And I mean, that. so the SS showed up at his house and told him, look, you can either kill yourself or we'll kill you. And I mean, so I, me personally as a history guy, if there was a statue of Rommel and there was a plaque underneath explaining, you know, he was a uh, Nazi general, um, but he started in the German army, not as a Nazi, you know, and and if you read about Rommel, well, there's actually a question as to what into yeah. Hitler bullshit as not a, a, not everybody who was in the German army were Nazis. They happened to be in the German army, and they became Nazis as a result of it when the Nazis took power, but they didn't necessarily prescribe to the Nazi. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Creed. Uh, yes, Phil. Phil's got his hand up. I, I see what's going on now is another attempt to rewrite history. You know, they've tried to say that the uh, Holocaust never occurred. Uh, there's there's all sorts of things that people try to rewrite that uh, they they try to write out the Japanese uh, that they were interned uh, in California. They, they do. You don't see these things in the history books because people are, are uh, embarrassed by it. And 
and uh, getting rid of these things is, as Josh says, you learn from the past uh, how to deal with the future. And so if, if, you, if you take these things and eliminate their history, what you're doing is you're whitewashing what really happened and people aren't going to know the truth. Uh, yes, Charlie. The difference is you don't, if somebody wants to hang a Confederate flag outside their house, I don't care. Like Patrick said, let them do it. But what I don't want is a Confederate flag hanging outside the Texas state Capitol that I pay for with my tax dollars. And I don't know that I have a problem with that. I mean, that's, that's fine. I mean, well, those monuments are at the Texas state Capitol, and that's paid for by my tax dollars. And yeah. probably they should be, uh, there was a suggestion here earlier, and I agree with it. They should be taken down and put in a museum somewhere. So, but, you know, I guess what I'm saying is, and I can guarantee you that we can, we, we can do some research and find some examples of uh, union veterans, for example, that were awarded, you know, uh, medals for their service in the Civil War, and if we comb through their personal letters that survived, I, I can guarantee you, especially in the earlier years of the war, we could find thousands of them who wrote home and said words to the effect of, I don't give a damn about free and no darkies, you know. I certainly don't want the nigger moving to the north, but we can't let the Union be broken up. So are we to forget what they did because they were on the Union side and they were, I mean, not, not every Union soldier fought to free slaves. I mean, Boston is the, yeah. is the hotbed of the American Revolution and in Boston itself, after the Emancipation Proclamation, people were nervous and tried to run Lincoln out of office because they thought that was a bit too radical because you know what's going to happen when all these free slaves are free, they're going to move up here and work for pennies on the hour because they've never had anything. And we certainly don't want them coming up here and mixing with the white race. I mean, it, not everyone was like that. I'm saying it's not simple like everyone thinks it's simple. So-and-so fought for the Confederacy. He's a racist. He should be forgotten. So and so fought for no. Him. I didn't say forget him. I didn't say you said Charlie. It's a larger argument than just what you said. It. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You, you, everyone always takes all this so personal. the The job of a historian is to not take it personal. Is to step back and look at it with the way that it was. There are no alternative facts and all this other nonsense mm -hmm. in this business. It is what it, it is, and. There are ways to comb through dead people's mail, <laughs> okay, and diaries and find out what they thought and said when no one was looking. And I'm just telling you, if you think that every Confederate general, whether he was good or bad at his job, fought solely because he hated black people and he just wanted to enslave them for his own self-aggrandizement, that's okay. not a true statement. Patrick has his hand oh. up and then Charlie has his hand up. Um, one of the Union, uh, he ended up being a general, uh, Joshua Chamberlain. Uh, he was a, what was it, 22nd Massachusetts, Josh? 20th Maine. 20, yeah. Um, he, I mean, he was in charge of, uh, I mean, several different um, people and, and he would have to battle with Gettysburg and a number of people that, that he commanded didn't give a shit one way or the other about the darkies and it's written about and it, it's in history books and all they wanted to do was to get in and and you know keep the, the like Josh said the country at one and not have it split up and the same with uh, a number of the people in the South. You know, I, I know nobody wants to hear that the Civil War wasn't about states' rights, but in a way it was. That was a good por good portion of it. Yes, slavery was a, was a very important and big part for the South to keep slaves, you know, to keep their economy, but you had a lot of people that they didn't want their states 
you know, uh, mm -hmm. to be run by the federal government that they felt was screwing them the same way that we felt we were getting screwed in the colony by Great Britain in the revolution. Yeah, you're right. Um, I mean, uh, uh, but, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Charlie's been chomping at the bit here. Charlie? It's not just because they're racist that, that, that we want those monuments and statues taken down. These are people that actually took up arms and fought against the American government. That's why I'm put, pointed out about Rommel. We don't put up monuments to Rommel because he fought against the Americans. He was our enemy. You know, let's let's go let's go to that, you know, to that uh, that show Antebellum that mm -hmm. she they said they were going to do. Okay, at HBO, let's say that the premise of that show came true. Let's say the Confederacy won the Civil War. Mm -hmm. What kind of discussion would we be having right now? Would that be interesting? Hey, they did the man in the high castle. So what's the difference? <laughs> no, but, but what what what, yeah, what, I mean, what it, would what, I don't know, it'd be an alternate universe somewhere? Yeah, uh, it's hard yes. To tell. I mean, yeah. I tell you one thing. What? I, I mean, it's fairly obvious. I mean, this it would be totally radically different. I think, unless they would have. Had oh, no war shit. After. I mean, unless they would have had another war after that, anyway, though. Yeah. Because yeah. sooner or later they would have they would have broke away. Yeah. Uh, it's a war. Uh, Kevin, how would it be different? Do you have an idea? Yeah, well, discussions going on. I, you know, uh, <clears throat> just the just the fact of the monument being removed. I, overall, I have a little bit of a problem with it, only because. Uh, it seems to me that we're sweeping history under, you know, it, it seems to me that we're, we're putting history behind us. Um, and, and we should keep it out there knowing to let people know what happened because kids nowadays won't know what happened. You know, we still have monuments. We still have Holocaust monuments. What if we just blow those up and get rid of them? No one will know what happened over there. Yeah. Same thing over here. I don't here. know what happened. Now, I, I understand what Charlie's saying, too. You they look at the monument. In, that didn't tell they you shouldn't be in, in government buildings. Maybe they could go, go somewhere else and put them into a museum that, re museums. that reflects yeah. that kind of a, uh, that kind of a, th uh, you know, into a black history museum or something like that, mm -hmm. or into a, mm -hmm. you know, a civil, civil uh, war museum or something like that that explains what these guys did and they have a statue there of them or whatever. The British have a war museum, you know. Yeah, that, something they, like that. But I don't think yeah. tearing them down and, you know, blowing them up and throwing them into a junkyard is, is the right thing to do either because there, there's history behind them and that, that should still be around because otherwise, you know, we're going to become... Uh, we're just going to become a no history country. Can I ask and a question? That's then? not right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can it be? Can it be like Kevin just said? You take it a step further. Can it be the further away we get removed from history, the less we, the less, the less they learn it. Like it's you know, you know, it's like that's too far back. When did they just you know? Let's only start from 1950 and work our way up. It's only oh, against no, the I education. Think a lot of people nowadays but, want to do that. They want to erase it and say we never. Well, just already been teaching, so that's too far back. You don't need to know. That. Phil, what were you going to say? I I said no more Magna Carta. No more Magna Carta. No more. Yes, Patrick. Hey, uh, nobody, no, nobody's what? talking about erasing history. We're talking about glorification of. Of people that fought to keep people in slavery, and so, you know, I mean, there's you can go to Europe, go to Germany. There's Nazis that walk around with okay. swastika flags, and you can go to uh, Italy, and there's there's groups that still support uh, Mussolini. Fine, they can do it, but they're going to get their ass kicked if they go into a crowd well, of well, you know people. So uh, fine, uh, go uh, ahead and do it. I want to get uh, friends. I want to go to Patrick. Wait a minute. I want to go to Patrick in a second because he had his hand up, but. Uh, there was a movie called The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. And the last line of the picture is, uh, because I think James Stewart is a, um, uh, is a reporter or something like that, he says, well, what do we write? He said, uh, we always print the legend, never the truth. You know, when, there, when there's a truth, always print the legend. 
And that's really what we do. I mean, we did that with Lincoln, too. I mean, Lincoln, did he really want to free the slaves, or did he, well, want, he want to take out economic sanctions against the South? Yeah, what Josh said earlier, <laughs> I, I agree with, is that this war was not, the Civil War was not fought over slavery. Uh, uh, it was well, fought over economics and uh it was what it was it was the issue that I think was, it was at the I think it was at the end. I think yeah. it evolved is what I'm saying. I think it was not simple. But it evolved it into it, 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 wait a minute, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It, it, I know Patrick has has to talk, so I, I just was gonna say, I mean wh why are there no statues to Rommel but there are to some Confederate generals? You know what my answer to that is? Because they didn't forgive Rommel for what he did in Germany. Here we forgave the Confederacy. Okay. Yeah. If you didn't, then that's fine. But Lincoln did, with malice toward none and charity for all. Yeah, but yeah, well, I mean, he said we have to heal this nation after the fact. Absolutely. He didn't. He didn't want, you know, trials for treason. I mean. Sure. I mean, Jefferson Davis was house arrested for, what, 16, 18 months and then let go. He said it's yeah. not going to do any good. Uh, uh, by the way, you know, you don't necessarily have to raise your hand because in Zoom, everybody can hear everybody else even if you talk yeah, over really them. Yeah. Uh, yes. I just wanted to add a little piece to what I was saying. Yeah. In, in, in retro, in, to add on to what I was saying, that nowadays, and I, and I refer back to a monument that was built recently of the black people and i'm not sure where it was but i remember it that they're putting up their own monuments as well there's one down in the south i i don't know if you know where it's at charlie where they have the i think oprah i saw it with oprah they have the the lynching monument where they have all those people hanging mm -hmm. hanging from it's a monument of yeah of lynchings and and and, and it's it's a really emotional monument, but it's there, and they should be putting those up as well to counter what, you know, those things. And, and in 50, 75 years, are we going to be talking about those as well? You know, is that, I, I think that's just as good as right. us seeing the same thing we're talking about today. No? I, I, who knows? You know. I mean, that, that, I mean that's, that's my point with Lee is, you know, what the left thinks of Lee today can't change the way it was. I mean, do you think he wasn't a hero to people? I mean, well, you know, uh, let me uh, let me I'm let me put this. Saying, in a, uh, me... He got he got thousands and thousands of people killed on the third day of Gettysburg, and he rode up and down the line saying, "It's all my yeah, fault. Let it's me, all let, my fault." Let me put this. And they all said, "No, it's not. No, it's not." And they reached out just just to see if they could touch his jacket. Let me put. Uh, let me. Let me. Let me. But let me just put this in a in a, a larger context, and that is, uh, I saw somebody saying, uh, uh, "Don't about tearing down the statues. Uh, don't ruin our heritage." Uh, there were p Confederate soldiers that died in that war, and what do we do about monuments to them? I mean, we in a lot of town squares, their names are enshrined. Uh, do we? Do we deny families that lost their their kids? You know, um, yes, Patrick. And don't forget, just you know, like Josh had said, with Lincoln wanting to heal the nation afterward, mm -hmm. there were very few Confederate that were not allowed back into the American fold as citizens or getting pardons. Lee happened to be one of those. Lee died as not an American citizen. He he was allowed to stay in the country, but he would never pardon, he would never parole. And, you know, um, and to Kevin's point about forgetting history, um, one of the things that, I, like, you know, bring up Rommel, and I mentioned a little yeah. bit about the history of Rommel. Yeah. yeah. Most of the kids today wouldn't even know who the fuck Rommel was. Yeah, and that's the fault of the education system. Well, exactly. And it's true what, what Tony said, the further away from history yeah. you get, the less you know. And that's pathetic because it, whether it's good history or bad history, yeah. you need to know what happened. And instead of just focusing on 
I'm sure the kid nowadays, all they're learning about is, as far as war, is what's going on in Afghanistan. Vietnam yeah. may as well have been yeah. the fucking revolution back yeah. in uh, War right. of the Roses in say. Britain. Yeah. You, 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 let me bring something they get up. Little quick. bits and pieces yeah. of this. this, this That's the education. Uh, let me bring stuff. something up qu quickly. Uh, who, that, who, that who is the kid? The Lynching Memorial yeah. is in uh, Montgomery, Alabama, at the National yeah. Memorial for Peace and Justice. Oh, no, uh, uh, Charlie, you'll remember the name. What was the name of the kid who, who got lynched years ago? It was a horrible lynching down south oh. simply because Emmett, he looked. Emmett, Emmett Till. Emmett, Emmett Till. Till. You know, and all these names, this long list of names that they list, Emmett Till isn't there. And Emmett Till was, you know, to my knowledge, when I was a kid, that was the big story. What is that? That's Oh, that's, that's the that's, that's that museum. The, but, the, yeah, the, I remember, really I remember seeing them, they put that up. But, yeah, I mean, Emmett, really Emmett Till, they don't even mention. <clears throat> I mean, when I say this has been going on forever, that the number of lynchings that went on in the South were on a daily basis. They were almost uh, entertainment for the locals, okay? And they yet, bring their family You know, where, really? where oh in God. all of this were these people who are now saying, oh, we so, we're, our hearts uh, go out to, the, out to the Floyd family. Your heart should go out to the Till family and to every other person who was ever lynched in this country. Because if you don't think what happened to George Floyd wasn't a lynching, you're nuts. That's my take on it. I mean, my I, opinion. I'm just saying, I mean, I guess I should point out, I mean, I'm not here to defend, you know, the Confederacy at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the Confederacy was, it was obviously a mistake. It didn't work. It was a bad idea. Government. I yeah. mean, the state's rights mantra yeah. does not work. It does not succeed. It's, it would take hours to go into why, but it, it, it doesn't. Okay. Right. So I'm not here to defend the Confederacy. I'm mm -hmm. not here to defend Robert E. Lee. I mean, for as much as I admire his ability in leadership, yeah. for you know a cause i didn't believe in i mean look i wouldn't have served in the confederacy i have served in the union army i don't have any doubts about that i'm so if my agenda is if if i have one my agenda is i'm here to defend from an uneducated ultra left uh point of view just taking over because a bunch of people heard this stuff on msnbc or whatever yeah. That, that's all. If yeah. you go and take the time and you look into this, you don't have to look into it nearly as much as I did. I'm just saying, if you would just spend a few days reading a book or two or some articles or whatever, and you still feel this way, completely fine. <clears throat> but I'm just saying, if you know, if, if everyone just feels this way because this is their reaction to the moment and they think it's going to solve the problem, that's what I'm here to defend against is this ultra-left you know, revisionist history taking over. I mean, you know, what Phil said earlier was we're going to become, a, or someone said we're going to become a country of no history. I don't think we're going to become a country of no history. We're going to become a country of left-only history, and if you don't agree with that, well, then you must be, you know... A, Whitewashed. Yeah, you're, you're Whitewashed. either for us or against us. I mean, it's just not that simple is all I'm saying. Well, a we, better way of putting it was we become a country of revisionist history. Uh, we already are. Old history of the, of the country. Well, I mean, come on. We can get into Columbus, and we can get into whether Lincoln really wanted to free the slaves, and we can get but, into a lot of I the mean, other it myths. It might be to some people, but it's not. It's not to historians. And I mean, by you the go way, to college, and you take, and you get a graduate or or a postgraduate degree in history. They don't hide any of this from the students. And by the way, Washington the did not did not themselves. chop down a cherry tree and say, "Father, I have to tell you the truth." Yeah, uh, so you know, right. I mean, and, there, and there's as I not say, a single modern day historian who won't point out all yeah, of those flaws. When it's bef between the truth and the legend, print the legend is how the saying goes. Hey, listen, that's our theme playing. That's our theme playing. Thank you very much to Phil Meyer. Uh, we've got Charlie Wallace down there. We've got uh, let's see down there. Uh, we've got uh, Brian. 
And thanks to Josh, and thanks to Patrick, and thanks to you, Tony, and thanks to you, Brian, and thanks to you, John. Uh, this That's our citizen panel for tonight. I think we should give them a big round of applause, and they should give you a big wave goodbye, okay? Bye-bye, guys. See you on Tuesday, hopefully. That's it for tonight. That's our, um, that's our little, uh, uh, our, uh, our little... <laughs> I don't know. Phil's holding his hand up like this, and I don't know why. But uh, anyway, that's our uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, we'll see you again. Let's see. We'll see you again on Tuesday. But by the way, next is the intersection with Jack Bishop over most of the same station. Be sure to join him for that. We'll see you on Tuesday, T- 10:30, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend and stay safe, okay? Okay.